Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Easter Musical 2022. Freedom in God, His Amazing Grace. Now, please welcome Deacon Claudette Hemmings with the opening prayer and the welcome. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, we pause with such gratitude for the gift of your unfailing and unfathomable love. Thank you, O God, for the cross, for the price you paid for us by dying, then rising from the dead so that we could have hope. What a way, God, to communicate your love, so extravagant and so gracious. We bow before you now in honor of your holy name. And so God, as we come in this virtual space to commemorate your death and resurrection, we thank you for the freedom to live our lives in you through your amazing grace. Thank you for the gift of music, for performers who have worked hard in pursuit of excellence to glorify your name. Sanctify and bless the music, the dance, the singing, the reading of the scripture, all presentations, and that through it all, lives will be renewed and persons will come to know you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. And now it is also my task to welcome you all to this Easter musical. So brothers and sisters, friends, I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is risen, hallelujah. Here we are again from the Edgewater Baptist Church and especially the music ministry in this virtual space where we have come to share the love of God through music. It is always such a delight to extend warm welcome to all of you in the reach of my voice who have joined to worship with us this afternoon. Very, very special welcome to some persons who are taking part this afternoon, to the, our co mcs sisters Levide West, and Carol Thorpe. The speaker for tonight who will bring the epilogue, Deacon Adolf Roden from our daughter church, Waterford Baptist Church. I acknowledge also at this time and welcome heartily our pastor, Reverend Dr. Dylan Toussaint and his family, who I know they are sharing with us this afternoon. I just want to extend warm and special welcome to the members of our daughter church, Waterford Baptist. I know you are on, and many of you are on worshiping with us this afternoon, and also to representatives of all the other churches sharing with us at this time. To our overseas brothers, sisters, and friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. This Easter musical is a very important activity of our church's calendar each year. We have not been able to meet face to face for our presentations for over two years, but thanks be to God for technology so we can use this online means to praise God through songs, dance, sign language, reading of scriptures, among others, all from the Edgewater Baptist Church. So now, as we're about to present our Easter musical under the theme, Freedom in God, His Amazing Grace, I implore you to open your hearts and your minds to receive the messages that shall come forth. Our music and communications director 
is Brother Rowan Jakes, who has been responsible for preparing the choirs, putting the programs together, and indeed for the whole production. God bless you, my brother. Again, I say, warmest welcome to you all. May your hearts be blessed. So, sit back and enjoy. God bless you.
Welcome to the Easter Music Hall 2022, entitled Freedom in Christ, His Amazing Grace. I am Carol Thorpe, one of your moderators for tonight. I am Levine Sinclair West. So, I believe Easter is truly a time of reflection for us as Christians, as we reflect on the sacrificial act of Jesus Christ dying on the cross for us. Wouldn't you say the same, Mrs. White? I totally agree. And do you know that most persons, or some persons for that matter, believe that Easter is all about eating bun and cheese? That's absurd. It is, because Christ sent his only son to die for us. That's truly it. amazing. It really is. So up first, we will have He Reigns Forever. Sing praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for he's the king of kings. Sing praises to the king, for
Bible reading for tonight is taken from Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our next item is a song from Malachi, Calvary Answers for Me. Satan just cowers to think of the power he lost when the cross had its day. And gone are the mornings when fear without warning would win and again have its Way. Now when Satan reminds me of things I regret, I bring a calorie, bless me, forget. I on the mountains of sorrow.
Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Up next on our program this evening is the song, This Blood. This blood speaks of the miraculous power of Christ's blood as it continues to permeate our very daily surroundings and continues to heal and touch everybody's lives.
precious blood that gave me life. But in the days he breathed again and rose his head in my in my So I Hebrews 11 verse 1 declares, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Up next on the program is The End of the Beginning, sung by the Combined Choir. Sit back and enjoy. I was taking a trip on a plane the other day Just wishing that I could get off When the man next to me saw the book in my hand And asked me what it was about So I settled back in my seat Bestseller I said A history and mystery in one Then I opened the book and began to read From Matthew, Mark, Luke and John He was born of a virgin one book it's the bible he said and i've heard it all before i've tried religion shame and guilt i don't need it anymore it's superstition made up tale just to help the weak to survive i'm gonna read it again i said listen closely this is gonna change your life Oh, 
end of the beginning, he said with a smile, What more could there be? He's dead. So they hang him, put nails in his hands, and a crown of thorns upon his head. I said, I'll read it again, but this time there's more, and I believe this is true. His death wasn't the end, but the beginning of life that's completed in you. Don't you know he did all this for you? He was born a virgin one morning night in the little town of Bethlehem. Angels got around him on the knees and started singing praises to the great I am. He walked from the water to heal a lame and made the blind to see again. And from the first time here on earth, we learned that God would be afraid. And For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Up next on the program is Victor's Crown.
angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship you. At the mention of your greatness, in your name I will bow down. In your presence, fear is silence, for you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple, let your power overflow. By your grace I live and breathe to worship.
It surely is a blessing to be able to host Easter Musical like this. Granted, it still is virtual, but it is still a blessing to be able to host it like this. I think the COVID-19 pandemic has had disastrous effects on persons spiritually, um, especially since we haven't been able to fellowship as we once did. Even the children were affected. What, won't you agree? I do agree, but it still has some positive if, um, to it because even at home, for me personally, we had a chance to have um, family devotions, more family devotions. So spiritually, we were able to connect. So it had negative effects, but I believe that it also had positive effects as well. Yeah, definitely. I think I was able to find like more um, faith-based pages, whether it be on Instagram, whether it be on YouTube. I was able to listen to more sermons because I wasn't necessarily forced to come to church and listen to just the one sermon i could find a sermon for every day um and speaking on her experience with covid19 and on her spirituality in terms of her christian faith is miss amira campbell the past two years have been rough due to the pandemic the school closed and i had to do online classes i was not learning much because i had multiple distractions such as games, but I managed to keep my grades up. The pandemic has affected my spiritual life because church was closed, so I would not be able to attend Sunday school. Therefore, I thought that I was drifting away from God. The crucifixion to me means that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And that motivates me to try not to sin and to try and do well in life. Because God gave up his only begotten son. For whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Just 
Isaiah 43, verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Our next item is, He's God, which causes us to reflect on his marvelous creation and his everlasting power.
So, you know, Sister Carell, just a moment ago, we were having a discussion about COVID and its mm -hmm. negative and also positive impacts on our lives. Well, we'll have a special testimony now by my dear husband. Mm -hmm. Do you know who that is? No, you know, I don't know who it is. You really don't know? I don't know. I always see with him, but I don't know. Oh, really? Well, you'll know right now because I'm going to be introducing him. The special man of tonight, Brother Sheldon West. Hello, brothers and sisters. My name is Brother Sheldon West, a member of the Edgewater Baptist Brotherhood. It is indeed a pleasure for me to share a testimony with you at this moment on my COVID experience. First, I must talk about how COVID affected me spiritually. Spiritually, COVID was very cumbersome on me because I am a person who likes to be in the physical church. When I attend church, immediately from my entry of the premises, I start referencing all the problems, everything that is at me, I put them aside and my focus is on the Lord and His kingdom. However, when I'm online, I am sometimes distracted by other things. I'm sometimes doing other things. And as a result, even though I'm hearing, I am not feeling that connection with the world. When it comes on to family though, during the COVID pandemic, the family became closer. We learned more about each other and we did more things together. We had movie nights, we went fishing together, we had game nights, and overall it was great. However, there was some collateral damage. I lost my father during that time on the 31st of August, and then the day after I lost a best friend. A best friend who I've known since 1996. Someone who I was the best man at his wedding, and the godfather of his only child. And then, to make matters worse, during this period, my mom was hidden from the COVID pandemic. No. I couldn't even tell her what was happening. I had to keep that from her. I could barely talk on my phone. You know, so that was a really rough time. You know, I felt so stressed at times. You know, what to God to the glory. But you know what? I found or uh, reconnected with a childhood friend. And, you know, we have rekindled our relationship and we are moving forward together now with a lot of plans and we have a lot of common goals and aspirations. You know, my mom and I, we are now closer than ever. You know, so it's, it's not only bad, but there were many good things. I've become more resourceful. I've, I've, I've done more introspection into my own personal life. But what does Easter really mean to me? You know, Easter is really for me. It gives me hope to know that I serve a God that was resurrected who can overcome all things in life, who has done all things. So I too feel that, that no matter the challenges in my life, I know that I can overcome too and ascend over the challenges. It is also a time for me of a real connection, a real committing, you know, getting closer to the Lord. So Easter is very special. No! 
Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Now, tonight, as the name suggests, is the Easter musical. But it's not just filled with songs of singing, but also of dancing. Up next, we will have Psalm 46, performed by the ministers from the Vessels of Praise.
oceans roar, you are the Lord of all, the one who calms the wind, the waves, and makes my heart be still. Though the earth gives away, the mountains move into the sea, the nations rage, I know my God is in control. guest speaker for tonight is no other than Deacon Adolph Roden from the Waterford Baptist Church. Good day folks. As we reflect on Easter, you know, we come to question ourselves as to what does Easter really means. For me, during Easter, we celebrate the most important day in history, the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. This is a day that splits history from before Christ, B.C., to in the year of our Lord, A.D. This event is central to our Heavenly Father's plan of happiness. Easter, what it really means to me, to you, for us. For me, being raised in a Christian household, Easter was always one of those fun holidays that I look forward to. This was the time when we had the fish and the festival, the bun and cheese, the family, the family gathering to eat at grandma's house. So I spent most of my Easter going to church on Good Friday and Easter Sunday to do services in the morning where we had the opportunity to meet with our friends of course, we would listen to the music and watch his kids whenever they were, but the sermons would be over our heads, or perhaps we'd be off to dreamland, dreaming about the food that was being prepared. However, as I grew older, for me it meant family coming together to pray and praise the Lord and recognize him being raised from the grave, having conquered both death and the grave. Have you ever thought about the remarkable personal significance Easter has for your life? Well, what Easter means to me is freedom. 
Freedom because of Jesus' sacrifice, his victory over sin and Satan, and his resurrection from the dead. I no longer have any debts. I am no longer a slave, for I am a child of God. God is a source of life. He is light, and in him is no darkness at all. 1 John 1 verse 5 God's antithesis is Satan, whose realm is darkness and sin. From the beginning, God made it clear that sin will lead to death. In Genesis 2 verse 17 and Romans 6 23. However, this freedom that we speak of, for one, if I were to have unforgiven sin, then Satan would have a line on me, and I would belong to the kingdom of death. The wages of sin is death, that much is certain, in Romans 6 verses 23. But I don't have unforgiven sin. When I repent and ask for forgiveness, then it is mine. I am free from the debt that I owe because of sin. Jesus has paid that debt in full on my behalf with his life. I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Thanks be to God. If Satan tries to say anything at all, well, he did this and he did that. So he really belongs to me. I should have the deciding say in his fate. Then Jesus can always come back with, yes, maybe he did do that. But I bought that debt and I paid for it with my life. So now it is mine to forgive and I do so willingly. I who deserve to die because I have sinned and completely forgiven and now belong to the kingdom of heaven instead of the kingdom of death. That is more grace than I deserve. But it has nothing to do with that with what I deserve and everything to do with John 3.16, God's love and grace for me personally. Secondly, the first freedom is just as great as the first. This freedom from having to sin in the first place. Jesus was a human just like I am. And he lived a life of overcoming every time he was tempted to sin. And because he opened up that way of overcoming, which was not possible before he showed us the way, he made it possible for me to do the same. This means that instead of being in bondage to sin, having no power to resist it when I'm tempted, now I have freedom from having to give in to the lust and desires of my flesh, and from having to do whatever comes from there. Freedom to overcome pride and arrogance, and instead be humble and meek of heart. Freedom to overcome irritation and frustration, and rather react with patience and kindness. Freedom to overcome despair and discouragement, and instead be filled with hope and faith for the future. Freedom not to get offended or bitter or envious of people, but rather to be thankful, loving, and joyful. Freedom to be happy, to have joy, to get all the virtues of Christ as part of my very nature. Nothing could be more desirable than that. All of these things I can do through the power and the grace that became available to me when Jesus sacrificed himself, when he died for me and rose again, because he owed death nothing and it couldn't hold him. This freedom is incomparable. I know just what I'd be if I didn't have the comfort of knowing that one day all of these things that I am tempted to will be completely overcome in my life. I would be hopeless. I would be lost. I would spend my days in despair and bondage to the sin which leads to misery and death, knowing that I don't have to remain as I am, a person with a human nature with a tendency to sin, but can become someone completely new is the greatest comfort and freedom and hope that I could possibly imagine. I can be purified and conformed to the image of Christ, Romans 8 verse 29. This is the greatest comfort I know. 2 Corinthians 1, 3-7 
I praise Jesus for what he's done for me personal, personally. He's offered me a way out of sin and the death. This makes life meaningful, rich, and worth living. Thank you. There's a wall that has been standing since the day that Adam fell. Sin is where it started, sin is why it held. Speaking as a prisoner who was there and lived to tell, I remember how it fell. I can hear the sound of freedom like a distant voice had called and beckoned me to follow where I had never gone. Though my heart was willing, I just stood there at the wall, praying somehow it would fall. But in a cross I found the doorway, and the hand that held the key, and the chains fell at my feet, for the first time I can see. This is how it feels to be free, this is what it means to know that. I am forgiven This is how it feels to be free To see that life can be more than I imagine This is how it feels to be free yeah. This is how it feels to be free yeah. There are days when I'm reminded prison I was in, like a living nightmare, burning deep within. I can feel the voice of evil, I can hear the call of sin, but I won't go back again. See, once I tasted freedom, and the walls could bind no more, mercy gave me wings to fly, like an eagle I can this is how it feels to be free This is what it means to know that I am forgiven This is how it feels to be free To see that life can be more than I imagine This is how it feels to be free yeah. This is how it feels to be free yeah. Somewhere there's a prison where the chains still bind There but for the grace of God, those bars can still be mine So for all the captive I say This is how it feels to be free This is what it means to know that I am forgiven This is how it feels to be free, yeah. This is how it feels to be free. This is what it means to know that I am forgiven. Free to see that life can be more than I imagine. This is how it feels to be free, yeah. Wasn't tonight just lovely? What an evening. I've been blown away. Me too. Even though I was into other items, I was still very surprised. Trust me, it was off the charts. 
remarkable. And I'm sure you audience at home are saying the exact same thing, which is why we thank you so much for joining us this year at the 2022 Easter Musical. We hope to see you again next year.